At the age of 13, my next guest was elated to see her first short story published in a music and lifestyle publication called Upbeat Magazine. And from that moment, the bug had bitten. Her debut novel, Red Ink, a crime thriller set in Johannesburg, was published in 2009 to both public and critical acclaim. And this was followed by The 30th Candle, a book that revolves around four university friends who navigate their way to their 30th birthdays with humorous and sometimes unexpected results. The Black Widow Society was published in 2013 following the cloak and dagger workings of a secret society of middle-class women who plot to eliminate their errant husbands through devious and underhanded means. Angela Mokolwa Mwabelo is uh, also a businesswoman. She runs a marketing and events management company called Bright Spark Communications. Angela, pleasure to have you with us here. Yeah, thank you for having me, Tim. Much appreciated. Mm. Well, crime thrillers, mostly when women write, and uh, this is a stereotype, so I mm. apologize up front. Mm. Most of the time it would be romance mm. and uh, probably, you know, life related trauma stories, and there will be a lot of sentimental stuff there. Mm -hmm. But on the back of your work, there's crime there. Yeah. Real crime. Serious Real crime. crime. <laughs> serious issues. <laughs> Women running secret societies. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um, the other one on crime in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Are these stories, you know, based on your own observations? It's obviously work of fiction, which requires a lot of imagination, but you borrow from... Real life. From real life. Yeah, um, with my debut novel, Red Ink, it was actually based on real life, a real life encounter that I had yes. um, with a serial killer. The guy, I was working as a journalist yes. and uh, then this was uh, in the 90s, in mm. the late 90s. Mm. And it was, I was following the trial of um, one of the most notorious serial killers basically uh, in South Africa. I can't name his name because at first the project started out as a biography. I was, mm. I was writing a mm. book on his life story. Mm -hmm. So I used to visit him in prison. Uh, he was at the Pretoria Maximum Security Prison. I would visit him, we would sit, uh, I'd interview him and then I gathered a whole lot of notes and um, you know, this went on for about six, to, six months to a year. Mm. But he wa he's a psychopath, he's mm. a serial killer. Mm. And so he started writing me letters mm. and, uh, the, and, and the process that we, were, we had agreed on. Uh, basically our, our agreement was that I would record his, his life story. Yes. But then, you know, he started meandering towards different directions. Yes. And so I had to abandon that project. Mm. Mm. And, uh, but then I looked at the material and I thought that perhaps if I fictionalized it, mm. because I'd done a lot of work, yes. Um, and I'd also have the creative license to actually make it into a full-bodied story yes. because, you know, I could tell during the process and my interactions with him that there were a lot of omissions yes. um, that would have worked in his favor because he basically, I think he wanted to, yes, we're all allowed to tell our story from our own points of view, um, but, you know, he had killed, I think, about 40, 42 women and one child. Um, and I think That's the it. end point, I, I did not scary, want but... to be party to, to that agenda. Yeah. I wanted an honest agenda where, you know, you tell us where you're coming from with that, why you did what you did. Uh, but for me, it was like he was seeking redemption uh, through this book. Um, and, and also there was an intention um, to, to deny, you know, some of what he no, did. So which, now there was no remorse or yeah, anything. Yeah, I did not sense the, any kind of remorse. And, I, I suspect uh, he yeah. was trying to manipulate you too. I I, I, it, In it, fact, there was, was definite manipulation yeah. there. So I just decided, no, I'm, I'm, I'm ditching this project. But then I thought, well, I mean, it's, it's a lot of work and it's an interesting story. And, you know, we didn't have a lot of um, those kind of cases at the time that mm. I was working with the story, mm. so I thought it was still worth telling, Yeah, just in a different way. And of course, obviously the material was based on real life events and mm -hmm. uh, all the experiences that you had, you fictionalized it. I fictionalized it. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of fiction. The, the female character, uh, like me, was a former journalist, had just started uh, her own PR company. So a bit of bi biographical <laughs> stuff just also. Just a little bit. I don't yeah. want people to read too much into it. Yeah, but I want to work to my way to the other two books, you see, because okay. there I suppose you had to now use a lot of creative no, imagination. No, yes, yes. I, I think it comes with a bit of confidence because obviously with the first book, you're kind of in that comfort zone. You write what you know. Mm. Um, 
which is good. It's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. But we, uh, you know, the first thing when I, you know, published uh, Red Ink, I felt that I needed to move away from kind of that darkness, that th mm. those dark topics and, and all of that. So I just wrote about four university friends uh, who were approaching this, you know, major milestone in their lives, exploring relationships, careers, all of that kind of thing that. Um, a lot of young women, I suppose, in that f at that phase in their lives concern themselves with. So that was quite a, a fun experience. It was more humorous and a bit light-hearted. Mm. So I really enjoyed that departure. Mm. Mm. But, in, but writing must be hard. I mean, it uh, is hard. <laughs> how much time do you set aside for that? You know, I, I can imagine you set yourself a target of writing Let's say what, 100 pages a week, or oh, oh, it can't be. Pages. Oh my goodness. <laughs> One page a week or <laughs> <No>. something. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it depends on where you are in life. I think uh, you get into different, um, I don't know, um, pr levels of productivity, I, I suppose. I don't know, for lack of a better word. So sometimes I really can't write. If, if there's a lot of distractions in my yes. life, if I'm doing a whole lot of things, I yes. can't really write. But sometimes, even in the midst of all that flurry, I, I write because. I'm, I'm now getting caught up in the story mm. and it just does not want to let you go. Mm. Mm. So uh, uh, when that happens, that's the best time because you write just feverishly, like any time that you get a chance. At night when everybody's sleeping at home, you start writing. In the morning or even between meetings, you get an idea but and, yeah, and, here's and the you, part you get started. Then I, I hear from many authors that yeah. besides battling to come up with the, you know, the the whole mojo, mm -hmm. helping you to write. Mm -hmm. Then there's the editing part. Oh, Because now you must decide what to I think every to, writer to... hates the editing yes. part. Yes. Because you lose your sweethearts and your darlings, all these characters <laughs> that came in and there's a scene that you thought worked wonderfully, but then when the editor looks at it, uh, it just doesn't make sense. It just yes. doesn't fit into anything. And you're thinking, but I love that. that is, yes. That's like my favorite scene. And they're like, no, no, no. But, but how I suppose does it even fit yourself, when you want the story, story to come together, that's it. That's it. That's it. That you you realize, I mean, I remember having to terminate a whole character. It was so sad for me because I really loved that character. <laughs> but it, I, when I read it, it was like, but what is this guy doing here, really? Like, seriously, he must just go. <laughs> as challenging as it is writing, but it also lights your fire, isn't it? I mean, of many course. many um, authors are inspired people at age 13 must mm. have been something else for you yeah I think you have to be you have to obviously be a person with a lot of imagination that's mm. the whole thing about writing and uh, imagination is a beautiful place to go to it's like a place in your head where you go out and play no matter how old you are you're 13 you go out you create things in that space and it's wonderful because when you see it on paper it's it's quite incredible that this is something that that came out of your own kind of vision and everything um, and and that's the thing about writing and I, I suppose any other artistic expression is that you have that room in your head where you're able to kind of live out these these lives and these you you but it's a canvas you keep on painting. Are we buying your that. books? Uh, we you are buying my books by South African standards. Yes, you are buying my books. They are bestsellers, but by international standards, it's a joke to call that a bestseller. Yes, because a South African bestseller is three thousand to five thousand copies. Right. But an international bestseller, of course, well, it can go to like tens millions. of thousands, millions. Or even millions yes. of. So now the uh, business side of things, is it in any way interfering with your craft or you set time aside, you have to find a way of balancing things out? Yeah, you have to find, I suppose it's an advantage actually to, to run my own business because, you know, I've, it's easy for me to maneuver, you know, pockets of time where I can focus on my craft. But I, I think it would be much more difficult if I had a full-time job because, mm. like I said, that you get into these different zones when you really inspired and the book is now practically writing itself, you really need to be able to find the time to sit down and actually put it on paper. So running your own business, of course, you're able to squeeze in that time. But if I wasn't, and there's also other commitments that come with being yes. a writer. Sure. You have to go to literary festivals, mm. present your books, come talk here, about talk them, come them. here, promote them, <laughs> tell people about them. How are they going to know if you're locked up in your room, you know? Right. Well, go and buy her books. She's got three published books. That's uh, Angela Makolwa Mwabelo. And she's also the founder of the company Bright Spark Communications. What's the title of the last book, by the way? Let's the Black it. Widow Society. The Black Widow Society. Don't be scared, guys. <laughs> read it just for fun. It's a thriller after all, and you've read too many crime novels in your life. 
Anyway, thank you very much for talking thank to you. us. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Sure. And this is how we come to the end of the show. And we appreciate our guests and we appreciate you staying with us on this journey of change as we try to make a difference. We invite you to be with us again tomorrow night.